I would like to like this. And I've been known to shit on things that people think are spectacular and wonderful. Red wall. Even if what I think is that it sucks. Like I said that on the internet. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with my November TBR. Did I learn anything from October? I learned not to put 30 books on my TBR. Instead I have however many this is. I actually haven't counted. 19 books, which sounds like a lot normally, but after having read 30 however many in October, this is nice and light. But I mean, to be completely honest, like I am not going to like force myself to read all of these because October was nuts. I am pooped. I want to have fun reading. So we're just gonna do for sure the obligations and then as many of the others as I can comfortably get through. So in no particular order, here are the books that I will be reading in November. First up I have Redwall by Brian Jaques. I, this is super random, but so I was shopping for fall mugs as one does and I stumbled upon and of course ordered a mug that has sort of like a fall scene with some like mice and like acorns and fall things and of course the first thing it made me think of was Redwall which then made me think of and realize that I hadn't been thinking of Redwall in a very long time. I was like oh yeah Redwall. <laughs> I forgot that existed. I read a bunch of the Redwall books when I was in elementary school. I love Redwall and then I just like totally forgot that it existed. So I decided that I just really wanted to revisit Redwall like literally because of that mug. I was like you know what? I want to reread Redwall and it's a really fall vibey kind of story. So I have here the first Redwall book and uh, I might read a few more in the coming months. We'll see how I feel but definitely reading this one just because like the nostalgia bug got me. It just called to me. I was like Redwall. That sounds perfect right now. So, uh, speaking of children's and middle grade literature, the next thing uh, I've got is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. This is the second book in the Morgan Crow series. Okay, I finally think I figured it out. The series is not called The Trials of Morgan Crow. The first book is called Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. This is Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow. So I think it's just the Morgan Crow series. I'm glad we could learn about this together. I have Buddy Read Nevermore with Vish from Books with V, and uh, we will be reading Wondersmith together as well. And I think we're gonna read the third one together as well. If not, I've just decided that we are, and you better be okay with that, Vish. <laughs> yeah, I really, really enjoyed Nevermore. It is a fun middle grade story with, honestly, the best thing about Nevermore. I mean, I think it's good. I don't wanna make it sound like it's not good, but like my favorite thing about Nevermore is Morgan Crow, because she's such a, a feisty and uh, snarky character. Like from borderline page one, I was like, ooh, I like her. Okay, I think I'm gonna like this. And I mean, the world is, is fun and whimsical and everything you kind of like hope for middle grade fantasy to be. So I'm really looking forward to the second installment and to buddy reading it with a fish. Next up I have, actually, let's do this one next. Speaking of middle grade, I'm actually reading a lot of middle grade. The Blades of Bodice Reapers book club pick, Mara's Choice, is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard by Rick Riordan. Um, this is the spin-off series from Percy Jackson. So Percy Jackson is all Greek and Roman gods. And then Magnus Chase is Norse gods. So basically Mara <laughs> is throwing out the best hope she's got of me liking Rick Riordan by like dangling Norse mythology in front of me. I really hope for Mara's and everyone else's sake that I don't hate this. <laughs> I would like to like Uncle Rick's books. Um, so I'm, I am looking forward to this and I'm going in with, with hope and with enthusiasm and very much gonna just very, I hope, I mean, I can't make myself like something, but I'm very positively disposed towards this. It will receive the benefit of every doubt. So I would like to like this, but regardless, you will see what, how we all feel about it in the live show on Mars channel, which is a little early this month because of the holidays. So it'll be the Saturday before uh, American Thanksgiving, so. Come join us for that chat, uh, where we'll all find out if Uncle Rick is for me or not. <laughs> Next up I have The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. So I read the Truly Devious series and really liked it, and then I didn't know that there would be more books in that world, I guess. It's weird to say in that world, because it's not fantasy. But I believe this is a spinoff. Like, that mystery wrapped up in the third Truly Devious book. But I think this is a spinoff about one of the characters from Truly Devious, I believe. I mean, this is very much like obviously in keeping with the Truly Devious son. I think it says on it 
that it's a truly devious novel. I feel like I've said that on the internet. <laughs> anyway, so that's why I'm reading it because I like truly devious and I finished it and then there's, oh wait, there's more. So I was like, all right, well, let's do that too. Even if it is purple, lots of purple books in my stack. That's a lot of fucking purple books. All four of those. <sighs> Who even am I anymore? Next up, I have the next two that me and Heather are tackling in our Hogarth Shakespeare uh, project and that is The Merchant of Venice and the retelling Shylock is My Name by Howard Jacobson. I really like The Merchant of Venice. I think it's it's not my favorite Shakespeare play. We already did that one. <laughs> uh, but it is one of my favorites. I do really love The Merchant of Venice. And I do think The Merchant of Venice, more so than some of the others, I like this makes sense to me why they would choose that as something to retell. Like I think it lends itself to, well, actually me and Heather were talking about this in our previous live when we talked about the winter's tale about how there are certain things about the merchant of venice that i'm like i wonder if they just will omit that because i really struggle to see how you would include that in a modern retelling but in any event we will find out how they tackle it and whether or not it's good and then we will chat about it live on my channel so please join us next up i have the dragon republic by rf kuang one of my goals for the year was to finally finish the poppy war series and I realized that I have very few months left to do that. So I pretty much have to read The Dragon Republic in November and the, what's it called? The Burning God in December if I want to achieve this. This is supposed to be even darker than the first one. So, Geronimo. Next up I have The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, which is obviously a reread. I actually read this last November as well. It's just a very November-y book. It's it's also one of my all-time favorite books on a shelf that is out of frame right now. I have like 10 different copies of it. So yeah, um, Bethany and I will be rereading The Name of the Wind because it's also one of her favorites. And uh, we want to do a podcast episode on The Name of the Wind. So not that we need to read it again, but why not? Is this a great time of year for it? So very much looking forward to hanging out in uh, the world of the King Killer Chronicle once again. Next up I have Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, this, please stop falling. This is a book about Shakespeare's, uh, William Shakespeare's son, who, whose death um, is said to have very much affected him. And I think is a lot to do with why he named Hamlet Hamlet. I believe Hamlet is named after Hamnet. And this is just supposed to be an absolutely immaculate book. Like I had, I've heard nothing but praise for it since it came out. It's supposed to be quite, you know, I mean, it's about the Shakespeare's dead son. I'm not sure if it's taking place before he dies or while he's dying or right after he's dead. I don't know. I tried not to know too much about it. All I know is that everyone says it's like absolutely stunning. I love Shakespeare and um, I also like torturing myself with with uh, bitter and bittersweet books. So many tears will probably be shed. Looking forward to this. <laughs> Next up I have The Starless Sea by... Stop! The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, the author of The Night Circus. I read The Night Circus in October and I figure I may as well get around to The Starless Sea as well. Finally see what this lady is all about. She's only written those two books as far as I know, right? Also by Aaron Morgenstern, The Night Circus. <laughs> okay, so I mean, this is an absolutely stunning book and I have two editions of it. I have this regular UK hardcover for it, which I kind of think is prettier than the Waterstones edition, which is very similar. I mean, it's just an absolutely stunning book. So for that reason alone, I really hope to like it so that I don't want to get rid of a book that is this beautiful because I hate the story. I've heard very mixed things about this. I could see myself loving it. I could see myself hating it. So we'll see how I do with it. <laughs> Next up, I have the fourth book in the Chronicles of Prydain by Lloyd Alexander. The, uh, this one is Terran the Wanderer. Or Terran Wanderer? I thought it was the Wanderer. I guess it's just Terran Wanderer. That's kind of a silly name. Anyway, um, this is the fourth installment of four out of five. Um, so I'll read the fifth one December and we'll call it a day. I've been really enjoying my Prydain journey. I read a lot of Lloyd Alexander when I was a kid, but never the Chronicles of Prydain. But I have seen the Black Cauldron movie many, many times. So I've always wanted to read these books. One of my goals for the year was to finish the Chronicles of Prydain. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm excited about doing it. Next up, I have A Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. As you may already know, as you probably should already know, myself and Jimmy from the Fantasy Network and Alex from Alex Nieves are buddy reading and doing a read along of the Song of Ice and Fire books. Uh, we did Game of Thrones. We did the live show on my channel in October where we talked about Game of Thrones for three hours and got quite drunk. So in November, we will be talking about A Clash of Kings. And this time we're going to be on Alex's channel. Exact date and time TBD. But uh, we will, towards the end of the month, for sure, 
be discussing A Clash of Kings and I am super stoked to continue this reread of A Song of Ice and Fire. It is just so good to be back. Where it all began to where to like remembering like oh my god it actually was so good. It is so good and then we'll always have the books no matter what the show did we'll always have the books. Anyway stoked for this stoked to chat with Jimmy and Alex so please join us. Next up I have another goal for the year that I kind of forgot about and then I was like oh crap Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Dark Artifices. One of my goals for the year was to start the Dark Artifices. So I'm starting the Dark Artifices. <laughs> this book is really really long which is you know great. Love that for me. The text isn't super tiny but it's not super big either. That's all I have to say about that. Next up I have Half a King by Jabber Crombie and Half the World by Joe Abercrombie. These are the first two books in the Shattered Sea uh, trilogy. My patrons and I will be buddy reading Half a King, which is actually a reread for me. And I put this as one of the options because I realized that I could very doably read everything that Joe Abercrombie has written in the year 2021 because I reread re -read all of the first law books in anticipation of the release of Wisdom of Crowds and then obviously read Wisdom of Crowds. Then I had a gap month in which I could have read Half a King, but better late than never, I realized November and December, I could totally knock out these first two books and then in December knock out the third one and then have read everything that man has written in one year. Uh, so that's that's gone on here. <laughs> I always did mean to go on with the series, um, but it's been a minute so I would like to reread this um, anyway to refresh myself on this world and whatnot and to give it a second chance because I was kind of let down by it the first time. Although I have heard that the second and third books are considerably better. So I'm looking forward to some more Abercrombie even if it's not first law. Next up is another goal for the year that I was like oh crap <laughs> going up at the end of the year. Uh, Heir of Navron which is the third and final book in the Rioria Revelations which is actually a bind up of two. So this is what are the two in here? Wintertide and Perseplicus. So yeah, it's a chunky book, um, but I have been reading the Riera Revelations for freaking years and I want to finally read or finally finish the Riera Revelations so that I can read the Riera Chronicles, so that I can read the Age of whatever it's called, the prequel books that are so, so gorgeous and hardcover and and I don't think you can see them behind me anymore. I moved them. I have been collecting those because they're so pretty and I bought them before I ever knew that they were prequels to anything. So I just need to finally knock these out. And I'm excited because I like these books. I just, they just keep falling off of my radar, my priorities. So we're prioritizing, we're finishing the Rear Revelations this year. It's happening. Next up, I have the book that my patrons are making me vlog for them. And that is The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. I really need to start giving my patrons page limits on what they could pick for me. So this is 800 pages. They assure me that it is spectacularly wonderful that I've been known to shit on things that people think are spectacularly wonderful. So we shall see what I think. At the very least, it's long. So if I hate it, I'll be hating it for a long time, which is never good news. <laughs> but uh, I mean, if it is epic, which I very much hope that it is and epically good, then I mean, I'm all about a long chunky fantasy book and I can, I mean, Hob books are not short and I enjoy every second of a Hob book. So. I very much hope that I like this because this is a long book to be reading if I hate it. <laughs> Speaking of long books that I might hate, next up I have The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan because of course I want to read the book before the show comes out. I'm not gonna lie, I've been told for a long time now that I probably will not like these books and I don't doubt that. I'm also not gonna lie, the ads for the show do not thrill me. This isn't a situation where like watching the ad for the show makes me go, oh, actually that looks kind of cool. Like I want to be into that. No, the ads for the show make me even less keen. But regardless, I want to know what I think of this book and then know what I think of the show. Even if what I think is that it sucks. <laughs> I might vlog this, I don't know. We'll see. Obvious reasons for this. <laughs> and last but not least, I have the declaration or a declaration of the rights of magicians by H.G. Perry. This was actually sent to me by Bethany because <laughs> she didn't like it. She thought it was really, really boring and dry. When she was describing it, I was like, that sounds kind of like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And a lot of people complain about that book being too long and too dry. And I love Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And so Bethany was like, hey, you might like it so she sent it to me. I hope I do. I love the title. I love the concept. I mean it is a lot like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell in terms of like placing uh telling a sort of a magic story but in a placing it in a very specific um historical time period and then involving like that historical time period. So like involving like 
the economy and tax policy and diplomacy and everything, but like with magic, because that's kind of what Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell does, where it very much tells a story about the Napoleonic War era and about the Napoleonic War, but there's magic and there's this whole battle of magic between Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And there's a lot of historical detail and it goes into it and it, it definitely took Susanna Clark a long time to research and pull that together. So if this is anything like that, I am keen. But um, this takes place in the Age of Enlightenment and we've got Robespierre is a mesmer and we have a weather mage in Toussaint Louverture and then we have the Prime Minister William Pitt. It will require the combined efforts of revolutionaries, magicians, and abolitionists to unmask this hidden enemy before the world falls to darkness and chaos. I mean this sounds dry. <laughs> But a, a dry that very much appeals to me. So it's really all in the execution. This concept, I am sold. I really hope that the execution is as charming as I'm hoping that it will be. Because if it is, this could totally be my new favorite thing. And those are all the books that I hope to be reading in November. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you plan to read these books, if you would recommend these books to me, or if you would like to discourage me from reading these books. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but I think Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join our Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Okay. Oh God. No. Please stay.